Okay, hope the whistle's down here. Okay, this is how we're going to get this can to go over this pipe. We got slop in it. Okay, this is what we did. We took another can the same size. We chopped off this much, which would have been this much here. Then split it with the scissors. As long as I cut my Dremel. But I did cut this with my scissors. Okay. When I get up here to this band, throw a little tip here. Just cut it with side cutters and cut right through it. You can do a lot of cutting on these cans with the scissors. Also, you want to jab down here in a room like this part, jabbing your scissors, cut it, then come back, find your groove and cut in it. You can murder the bottom of the can, what I call it, just destroy it, just to get it cut off close. That way you can cut this way with your scissors. Then you can always go back and trim it. So you don't need a whole lot of specialty tools. I did take about a quarter inch off this. Okay. Because I don't want it to overlap. That just caused me a problem. Okay, this will be riveted in here. We'll have it marked. So let's say this is three inches. We'll make sure to have our rivets down to where it grabs the inner can. Let's try to do this on film here. So I still call it film video. I have to get it over here. We didn't need to go all the way up there. Okay, we did mark this three inches, which we're probably going to only go on about. Got to get off the camera here again. Probably going to go about two and a half inches. Okay, because we'll have our rivets, like I said, half inch down on the can. We're going to use long rivets. We may use four. We may use six. We may use whatever we think. We do not want this to ever go past there. So, this took up the slack. Plain enough to be a blue stovepipe. There's a little bit of play, but your exhaust is flowing this direction, left to right, going up. Because this will be the top. There's the bottom. Be flowing up into there. And then we're going to have our air freshener, our last can and our air freshener can, which I showed earlier, that's the old style can which worked out really well. It gave me the top I wanted. And I did the same thing with this, get the air fresher can in here. The only thing different I did, I used another can that was bigger, made it, it fit. And I added some tin for a shim. Had some left over from another small air freshener can, which is this type of tin. It's really nice, smooth, easy to work with. So, next we'll show how we do this the two can things here. We're going to cheat and use our Dremel to saw this off. But we'll show you how we crimp it and how we slide it on there. And then this video will be done. Hopefully I've covered it. So, even if I don't show the rivets, I said there will be rivets about half inch down the edge of that inner can. It will stop way before this line. So I plan on going about a half inch down. And that's plenty of a snug fit for a camp So, Of course, in a tank you're going to have proper ventilation. Put the watering disclaimer. If you're ever going to burn anything inside of a tank, you better have plenty of proper ventilation and everything. Which, you know, in the wintertime, you have the bottom of the tent with air coming in. You watch how people do videos, they'll tell you that. Have a little air hole where your oxygen flows into your stove. And you do have carbon monoxide chance, but a little wood stove, you're, you don't have the same problems as trying to run some kerosene heater or propane burner on a tank or something like that that isn't vented to the outside. But let's make a nice free stove pipe. It's going to be pretty big. It'll look pretty long when I get done. It does look kind of monstrous. But if you want to get up near it, we use it outside. We don't want smoke in our eyes. Because we haven't got to play with it and even cook on it. We built this thing way at the beginning of last year. So on to this part, cutting this can, then this video will be done. Okay, we got our piece of can in there riveted. Riveted, riveted, did. Say that word real fast. Rivet, riveted, did. If it ain't fun, I ain't gonna do it. And we're down about a quarter inch from the edge of the can. You kind of look at an angle, so it grabs it. Kind of screwed up here the holes, but I said this ain't rocket science. 
Going that far, it hits the rivet. Okay, that's a pretty snug fit. Actually, if it stood it up the creosote, you may not get it apart. That's what I'm worrying about, to get it fit too tight. There you go. We got this far. All these cans are hooked together. Next is to show how just to cut this bottom off and crank, crinkle it in. They actually have make of pliers for duct work so you could get the other can to slide on the same as this. Then we're done because that can's already hooked to the air freshener can and we showed how we got that all spliced together. So, pretty nice little stove pipe. I know we're going to be over three feet tall. So, we're off to that. Okay, we cut the bottom of our can off. This is the best way that I do it. It's a diamond blade. Your other cutter blades will snap break. I have cut, it's going to be hundreds of cans this winter with this, between two of these diamond blades. One of them got a little wore down. They do cut better on the sides than on the edge, so you got to kind of burn into it to get your cut started. They are pretty wicked. They can get out of control on you too. Depends on what speed you got the Dremel at. I like using a higher speed, which cuts faster, less heat. Gets the job done. So I don't know of any other way to cut them unless you took a hacksaw, which can wreck the can. Okay, then we took our needle nose and did the crinkle thing. We'll pull it apart and show. We did our crinkle thing. If you do have trouble at the last resort, I have cut small, don't go too deep, go about a quarter inch and cut a triangle out. We'll just go ahead and do it on camera. If you run into a little trouble, use the end of your scissors, that way you know you won't go too far. If you chop out a couple little triangles out of there, they can make you a little bit smaller, like maybe four of them. Because the can's going to slide on this far. I don't know if we can get it to slide back on there on camera. It takes a little bit of massaging and working. Uh, I've used everything from a hair dryer to laying it on the wood stove to warm up this can to make it bigger, heat expand stuff. But I have been pretty lucky. But this is the last can. It's not the same type as these. So... It may be a little more complicated. All these cans that were the same with these kind of bottoms went together really well. This can seems to be just a little bit different. I've noticed it's almost like it's not big enough like the other ones were when you took the bottom off. But we'll get it. So we're done with this part of the video. Uh, I don't know if I made this so long this has to be two parts or not, but showing how I made the stove pipe. That one I show the stove, uh, you'll understand how the pipe was put together. Thanks for watching.